Are you taking the ACT soon and wondering how you can ace the ACT math section? If so, this video is for you. What we're going to do today is go over some of the toughest ACT math problems and how to solve them. Before we get going, I recommend that all of you subscribe to our channel by clicking subscribe below this video and head to supertutortv.com slash subscribe to sign up for our mailing list where you can learn more about all the wonderful things that we have going on here at Super Tutor TV. Additionally, I encourage all of you to check out our best ACT prep course ever that is available at supertutortv.com. It's over 50 hours of video prep for the ACT with me. It's like private tutoring with me for a heck of a lot less money than private tutoring will cost you. So go check it out. Um, and without further ado, let's get going. So basically what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go through some really tough ACT problems. What makes a problem really hard? It might be hard for some of you and it might not be as hard for others of you. Some of it depends on just what your math background is and what kind of math problems you personally are comfortable with versus other problems. So just because these problems might not be super hard for you doesn't mean they're not hard for someone else. I've tried to pick what I find a lot of students tend to struggle with, and those tend to be areas that what I like to say don't necessarily always fit into traditional math courses. So they might be the kind of problems that you see in probability statistics, maybe even physics class. They might be the kind of thing that a lot of you just aren't going to see in algebra or algebra two, or if your teacher gets to the end of the year and runs out of time, these are the kind of problems that your teachers tend to skip over. So. That's what we're going to take a look at today. First of all, the source for this, I'm looking in this preparing packet. This is an old ACT that was offered in 2011 to 2012. It is form code, if you go off form codes, it's form code 64E. So we're going to go to some of the last problems. So as most of you probably know, the hardest ACT math problems usually are like the last 10 problems on the test. It's usually where the hard ones hang out. So today I'm going to look at some of those. And the first one that we're going to do is sequences and series. A lot of people struggle with sequences and series because their math teacher like never taught them how to do a sequence or a series, or they forget what certain kind of series are called. And so that's really confusing. So here number 60 is a sequence problem. We're going to go over that. If you need more practice on some of these tough math problems, I will say as part of our best ACT prep course ever, we do have problem sets that cover almost every section of the ACT math section, including sequences and series. We have a whole problem set full of these that's available to our subscribers. So if you do want more practice on these, I recommend that you go check that out. So let's go ahead and take a look at number 60. The sum of an infinite geometric series with the first term a and common ratio r is less than one is given by a over one minus r. The sum of a given infinite geometric series is 200 and the common ratio is 0.15. What is the second term of this series? So to get this question right, you have to do two things. One, this is kind of what I call a function as a model problem. This is sort of like a mixed problem, meaning it's a little bit of one type of problem and a little bit of another type of problem. So not only is it a sequence and series problem, right? It's a, about an infinite geometric series. It's also a, what I call a function as a model problem, meaning that they give you an equation and then you have to fill in that equation with what you know. So let's first start with this equation or expression that we're given and we're going to fill in what we know. So what we know is the sum is 200, right? So I'm going to say 200 equals a over 1 minus r. Cool. And then I know that the common ratio is 0.15. And this is common ratio r is less than 1. So 0.15 is r, OK? And so that goes right here. So I can say that equals a over 1 minus 0.15. Got it? So this just basically becomes 0.85. So I get 200 equals a over 0.85, okay? And now all I do is multiply both sides by 0.85 and that gives me 85 plus 85, which is 170 equals a. And I would recommend you can just get out your calculator and do that math if it's any strain to the brain or just so you make sure you don't make any mistakes. That's usually a good idea. So I get 170 equals a, but guess what? That is not the question. One of the big mistakes that people make or why ACT problems can be super hard or why a hard ACP problem is hard is that the interstitial math that you're doing, you get to this end point and you're super excited and you're like, yay, I got the answer. You're not done yet. It's probably a two-step problem. So that's my first tip. When you have these tough problems, make sure you read the question. What we actually need is the second term of the sequence. Guess what A is? 
A is the first term. So then, in order to get the second term, you actually have to know the definition of a geometric series. If you don't know that or forgot it, you are screwed. So I'm going to re review with you what a geometric series is. A geometric series is a series in which we have like a first term like A, and then we multiply by R each time to get the next terms. So for example, my first term would be A, my second term would be AR, right? My third term would be AR squared, my fourth term would be AR cubed, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So that's like the situation, that's how it works. And what's going on here is R is 0.15. So my first term is 170, right? My second term is gonna be 170 times my common ratio, times 0.15, okay? And so what you do is you do 170 times 0.15, and you get 25.5, okay? So this is 25.5, and that is actually the answer because it's the second term in the series, okay? So two things you have to know here. First, you have to do this function as a model stuff, which just means you have to read this equation, understand what it means, and then plug in all the stuff. But the second thing you have to know is what the heck is a geometric series, and how do I then calculate the second term if I know the first term, and the second term is just the first term times that common ratio. There's another kind of series you need to know is about as well. That's the arithmetic sequence. Next, so this is another question that's kind of tough that my students struggle with, and I would call this, what I call this is a properties of numbers question. And the reason I call it properties of numbers question is it has to do with like integers, primes, and digits, right? Whenever you see a word like integer, a word like prime, or a word like digit, these kind of questions can really stump students because they're the kind of thing that like most math teachers don't necessarily teach. There's, they don't quite fit into algebra. I mean, they are algebraic questions, but they're not straight algebra, right? They're not quite geometry. So therefore, they're this kind of question that a lot of you struggle with simply because you don't see them in math class that often. So let's talk about how do we approach this one. For every positive two-digit number x with tens digit t and units digit u, let y be the two digit number formed by reversing the digits of x. So let's just wrap our brains around that. What that means is we have a two digit number x, right? And x looks like this, it's t then u, right? Then we have a digit, a y, and it's the two digit number formed by reversing the digits, so that's u then t, right? This is tens and ones. Which the following expressions is equivalent to x minus y. So here's what I want, I want x minus y. Well, this looks and sounds really confusing, but actually it's a lot easier than you know, because what we can do is we can represent these with algebra, okay? And let's talk about how we do this, because this is the tens place. I could actually find the value of this. Like, let's say this was 35, right? How do I represent 35? Well, that's three times 10 plus five, right? You see how I'm using the idea of the tens place to use this digit to then turn that into the value that that digit represents, which is three times 10, right? So this essentially, if I wanna say what that is, that is 10t plus u. Do you see how this is the value of x, right? It's 10 times whatever this is. If it were a three, it would be three times 10. And then we're gonna add the units digit onto the end, right? And we do the same thing down here. So this is 10u plus t. Right? You see how I can represent this algebraically? And this is just a fun trick that we can pull with these digit problems. You can just remember whenever you have digits or place value, you can multiply by 10 or by 100 or by 1,000, or the other way, if you have point something, 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 you can multiply, right? You can divide this by 10, right? Divided by 10 here, divided by 100 if you have these two digits, right? Et cetera. This could work either way, even if we're after a decimal point. We could use the same technique and make this concept into algebra. And then we just subtract our algebra that we came up with, and I get 9t, right, because this minus this, and then u minus 10u is negative 9u. So 9t minus 9u, and so there it is, t minus u. It's just factored up here. But you can see it's really easy if we can kind of get to this point where we recognize how do we shift from the idea of digits to the idea of numbers. It's not impossible, 
but there you have it. That's all I'm gonna go through for right now, but what I am going to talk about is if you are struggling with math on the ACT, what are some other kinds of problems that you should be aware of or work on? Um, so I'm just gonna list off some of the areas that most of my students struggle with. And again, if you're a subscriber to our course, we have packets on all these that you can review. And if you're not, you can just like get on the internet and make sure that you know how to do these kind of problems. One, arrangements problems are a big kind of problem that I see people have issues with. Those are like permutations and combinations. Sometimes those fall a little bit under probability and statistics, but permutations, combinations, and arrangements, that's a type of problem that you need to know that many of my students struggle with. Another kind of problem that my students struggle with is probability problems, mostly because again, like you see that in stats, but a lot of you haven't taken statistics. So you might not be super awesome at probability and that's something to watch out for. Those have also been increased in quantity on the test as of 2014. There are many more items on the exam now that deal with probability and statistics than there used to be. And so I found that that's a bit of an Achilles heel for many of my students. And also if they're working with older prep materials, uh, it's kind of a hole in what those prep materials cover. So make sure that you have those probability problems down. Um, sequences and series, like I mentioned before, that's another area you need to work on. Vectors, occasionally there are vector problems. And matrix, uh, matrix multiplication and matrix algebra. So that's about it. Those are some other areas that you might want to work on if you want to work on the toughest kind of problems that are math on the ACT. I hope you guys like this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel by clicking subscribe and head to our Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Go to our website, supertutortv.com. Watch more videos here on YouTube and I will see all of you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.